What's up everybody? This is Russ, RWGresearch.com. Diamagnetic levitation kits. This is the instruction. See what we can do. Check this thing out. Awesome stuff. A lot of fun actually. So, for those who bought the pre-assembled kit or the unassembled kit, or if you're building it yourself, this is a general introduction of how to get your magnet to levitate. So the first thing you're going to do is you are going to check out your kit. You should have two magnets, two small square magnets, and a big magnet. All right, you're going to just use one. You can use two, but uh, one seems to work a little bit better. Basically, you're going to make sure the polarity of the little magnet is pulling in towards the top magnet, and then set it in the in between the bismuth pieces. Turn the bottom bismuth piece until you have around a sixteenth clearance. Once you get it roughly close, go ahead and lower the top magnet to where you see the small magnet actually start to rise. Eventually you'll get it low enough to where the bottom magnet will pop up against the top. When that happens, you can lower the top magnet or make the top magnet go up and then turn the bismuth pieces until you get it to balance just right. It takes some playing around but uh, once you understand the best placement for both the top magnet and the bismuth you'll learn that uh, you get to a point where it'll fall off not like that that's just because I'm moving it around. So you gotta make sure it's the same polarity and just stick it in there. I got the thing a little tilted. Not real fun to hold it in your hand and try to make it work. But we'll get to that later, playing with it on the table. So basically you're just going to adjust the magnet and the bottom bismuth until it floats in there really nice. You'll, you will learn that there's a balance point between them all. If you have too big of a space in the bismuth, it will not work. It will actually either fall to the bottom or go all the way to the top. So, playing with it is your best way to learn. Okay, well that was a lot of fun. So, for those who bought the unassembled kit, or if you're building it yourself, this is how to assemble the kit. You're going to receive this in a kit if you purchase it from rwgresearch.com. You got the three uprights, the parts that hold everything, the bottom bismuth holder, the bismuth, the nuts and bolts. This is actually a stud with a, with a nut on top, but you may actually be receiving a bolt depending on what I have at the time. You have a top um, steel bolt, and then you also have a magnet. Basically, you're going to have to have a pair of pliers that move in parallel with each other. You could also use a vise. I have here a washer. All the hardware is uh, 5 16 And be careful with that. Um, powerful magnet. Be very careful. You don't want to make your hand look like my thumb does. That's why it's black. So first you're going to take the bottom bismuth holder plastic part and put the stud in there as showing here. You're going to just barely press it in there. Now the most important part about this is to get these things square. You're going to want to get everything square pressed into the plastic. You don't want to press it in there at an angle. So I actually use the stud and another one of your nuts along with a washer so you don't pull it out of the bottom basically and just tighten it down on there and that will pull the stud with the nut on it into the bottom bismuth holder. It should be flush with the bottom. If you get a bolt it may actually be undercut where it's actually too low. That's not a problem. Just pull it so it's square. You basically want it tight against the bottom. So now you're done with that piece you can uh, double check and fit the bismuth in there if you want. So just insert the bismuth piece, just press it in there and kind of turn it a little, make sure it's all the way down square. You want to make sure everything's nice and square, give you the best results. So that piece is done, we'll set it aside. 
Next, you've got the top bismuth piece, and basically you're just going to work it into the bismuth holder. And uh, I find if you kind of turn it and slide it in there, make sure it's all the way down, and it should press in there and stay. You can glue these things in there, but it's not necessary. The fit is pretty tight. So next you're going to take the other, one of the other nuts, and just kind of get it started in one of the either top or bottom holders. And you're going to want to make sure that you get these in there square. So either a vise or a parallel moving pliers. These pliers actually move in parallel. So you're going to get a good surface area. Press it down in there and give just a light pressure. You don't want to blow the bottom plastic part out because it's pretty thin. But you want it to be flush with the bottom. You can use stainless. I'm using uh, brass and I'm doing that so the magnetism isn't affected. Now before you put the other part, uh, the other stud into the bottom bismuth holder, you can use it to pull in the nuts into the holders. Okay, so if you wanted to do it this way, you can. If you don't have a pair of uh, parallel pliers, you can just use the stud and pull it in there like that. Then you'll have to use another nut or one of these to pull in the stud. But make sure you get everything square, that's the most important part. So now we have everything assembled. Now we're just going to insert the top bismuth. Okay, so the top and the bottom. Alright, the bottom and the words go up, reading down, basically, top to bottom. RWG research. Like that. So the top bismuth piece is going to be facing down. There's a big angle and a little angle in distance. You're just going to make sure you get those right. So install the bottom bismuth into the bottom plate. And install the top holder. First attach the magnet to the stud. And then you can um, flip the pieces around upside down. They won't hurt anything if you do that. I just like it so you can see the nut, but you don't have to do it that way. So you're just going to pop the pieces together. It's very simple to assemble. Everything should snap together. Just make sure you have the big arch on the top side and the little arch on the bottom side. And uh, it's easier if you set it on the table like this and kind of pop everything together. If for some reason it fits loosely, you can uh, wedge a small piece of paper or something between the pieces, or you can just glue the pieces together. Super glue works very well. That is basically how you assemble the unit. Now you can go back to the first step and get everything to work. Fairly simple. Alright, so for those who are building it yourself from scratch, this is a step-by-step -step building instructions. It's fairly straightforward, not too difficult. First, we're going to cast the bismuth and clean it up. Let's get started. Alright, so here we are on the stove. I've got my forum. Okay, it's a three-quarter inch deep by three-quarter inch round hole that I've milled in here and I've got a quarter inch hole down the middle. I've got some quarter inch plugs because I drilled this really deep and that's just going to allow the bismuth not to run out the bottom when I cast it. There's just a little space in there and the reason for that is that we'll have a little knob and we'll break that off. So I'm going to set this right here. Okay and we're going to zoom in we're going to just turn the Stove on here. I'm gonna put it on. Uh, I'm gonna put it on high, yeah. and we'll melt this bismuth. This is just a chunk of bismuth that I've already melted. All right, so we will just watch this melt away. I'm 
All right, now that we've got our bismuth nice and hot, we are going to just pour it into this casting. See if I can get a better view for you. Okay. I'll leave that on the heat, turn it down just a little, and you'll actually see this. Don't touch it while it's cooling. It's in a uh, it's in a block of aluminum, by the way. And once this stuff cools, you can. Slide it out. Slide it out. Slide out. Yes, slide it out. Yes. See? The aluminum cools it pretty fast because the aluminum is cool. So now that we've got it like this, let's go ahead. It's probably probably cool enough. Should just slide right out of there. Yeah, I can do. And we will make the other one for the second one here. Okay, now I'm just going to let this bismuth cool in this pan because I'm going to use it for more later. Turn off the stove. You don't want to touch it while it's cooling but if you watch you'll actually see it kind of pucker up in the middle. It's kind of cool to watch. Looks like that one's ready to go as well. Cools pretty quickly with the aluminum. <clears throat> After you make about two, <clears throat> it's actually, uh, the aluminum gets kind of warm, so you'll need to let it cool if you plan on making a bunch more. And there you go. There's your second casting. The aluminum is fairly hot now, so before I make any more, I'm going to cool these things off. But uh, there you can see, there's your slug. Now, uh, what I do is take this back piece. You could use this for mounting, actually, but I decided not to. And this stuff is pretty fragile. I'm just going to break that off. like that and now you can actually see the structure inside of the bismuth pretty cool crystal structure so we will put that piece back in there see if this one's cool enough we'll break this one off too now that's pretty good there we go just breaks off this is the base and then I will machine the top. You can leave them like this. Um, it'll work, but I'm machine them off, make them look clean. All right, so let's go machine these down, get them prepared. All right, so go ahead and uh, take your bismuth pieces that you've just casted. And what you're gonna do is uh, stick them on a lathe. Uh, this happens to be a mini lathe. It does not currently have a cross angled feed on it. It has a X and a Y but not the angled feed. So cutting the bevel is a little bit difficult but it, it did work. It just used a piece of high speed steel. But uh, you're gonna want to just cut the front edge off and clean it up nicely. And then go ahead and cut your bevel. The only real important thing is, is I would not make the 
top surface that's round and flat any smaller than the size magnet that you'll be levitating. These magnets are uh, currently in 42. Uh, the bottom magnet is a uh, 3 16 inch, inch cube and the top is a 3 quarter inch by 3 quarter inch cylinder magnet. Um, I have tried N52 and it seems to work well but if you do select different size magnets just keep in mind that the dimensions of the holder may change or you'll have to change the top magnet because you're actually holding the weight of the bottom magnet with the top magnet so if you use a smaller magnet in between the bismuth you're going to have to probably use a smaller magnet on top because you're not going to have enough clearance with this big magnet and the opposite happens when you use a bigger magnet between the bismuth. It took me a lot of time to figure out which magnets actually worked best. So if you can get a kit of a bunch of different magnets and try them all, it might be the best option. You're going to want to keep the bismuth shavings and melt them down and make more castings. So I just took a piece of paper, folded it up to catch all the shavings, and uh, it seemed to work fairly well. And moving on, let's start the 3D printing. You could actually start this during this whole process because it took quite a while for these parts to print out. Total time, um, each set of parts, uh, they hold, all the holders is approximately uh, 70 minutes and each one of the uprights is around 70 minutes. So it takes quite a bit of time to make all the parts. I printed the uprights standing up vertically. Um, you may need to lay them down depending on how much clearance your printer has, but uh, it seemed to work really well on mine. Uh, the taller it got, the more it moved around, um, but it seemed to work pretty well. Alright, so now that you've printed the parts, let's clean them up. It's fairly straightforward, depending on your printer and how well it prints. Um, my current tools of choice is a sharp razor blade, and it's usually for scraping on the side, not really for cutting. Um, and my second choice of tooling is actually a uh, pair of needle nose pliers, precision needle nose pliers. and it actually works really well for scraping instead of using a razor blade to cut into the plastic trying to scrape with it the pair of needle nose pliers does really well so the first thing you're gonna do is the uprights you're gonna have to I, I, I actually take and have a tiny bit of space on the bottom to support the entire top and it's only about I think 12 millimeters tall so that pops off fairly easy and then just kind of clean that bottom part up. That helps support it when I print it vertically. Then since I'm printing it vertically I've got these little spacers in the drawing that actually sit between the top and the bottom in between the slots. Oh yeah, so do that real fast. Did you see how fast that was? Uh, you're going to want to periodically test fit the pieces. If you have them too tight, you might snap the uprights off. If they're too loose, they may not snap together well. Um, you can't assemble this whole kit without any glue or anything. They will all snap fit together if the printer prints them out correctly. This is calibrated for my printer, so yours might be slightly different. If you're having problems with them fitting into the slots, what I do is take my knife and 
scrape off just a little out of time and keep test fitting it. If you try to cut it, uh, sometimes you'll just cut too much and that's not good. It won't snap together very tight. Alright, so here's some time lapse footage of cleaning all these parts up. You're going to want to test fit the bismuth castings uh, before you scrape too much plastic out from the inside of the um, part that holds the bismuth. If you do scrape too much, you may have to use some glue to actually glue everything together. So keep that in mind. Just keep test fitting. Don't cut too much out. Alright, so uh, now that you've got them all printed out, get all the scraps out of your way and just uh, start snap assembling all the pieces and make sure they fit well. Um, if uh, something doesn't fit well or too tight, don't force it. Just uh, scrape a little bit more plastic away and try it again. Um, the ABS is very strong, but occasionally you'll find a weak spot and you can possibly break it off. So that's pretty much it. Next. Time to just have some fun! Yeah! Alright, so now it's time to play, have fun, impress your friends, and most importantly, tell them where you got it. Now one of the uh, pretty cool things that you can do with this is uh, keep in mind that if you set it on something metal or you have magnets around it, it will definitely affect it. But uh, one of the most coolest things that I found out is that if you let this sit um, over a period of months, weeks or months, you'll notice that the magnet will float in different positions. It'll actually change so much that you'll have to readjust the magnets and the bismuth. So it's pretty darn cool the fact that it's so sensitive that I believe what's happening is the sun moon cycle is actually affecting the the placement of the magnet. So um, it's pretty cool. You can also grab a straw and if you're very careful 
you can actually blow this with a straw seems to work real well and get this little magnet to just start spinning like crazy and uh, it'll spin for quite some time just get it very close and start leaning in until you uh, still until you see it start to move and uh, if you're not careful you'll knock it out it's very 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 sensitive uh, when you got a lot of air moving past you'll blow it out of there real quick so uh, very carefully move the straw in and you'll get this thing to spin and it will just spin and spin and spin and spin also you need to be sure and not let the small magnet and fly up and hit the uh, the big magnet because you'll chip the uh, cube now it'll still float but uh, you'll break it eventually so just be cautious I've sent two with all the kits and I did that because you'll probably end up breaking one so don't lose the other one and uh, try not to knock it out you can also grab a um, what I used is a light cover for a fluorescent tube and slide it over the bismuth pieces and this will keep the magnet from falling out at all and it's clear so you can see through it you could also get a piece of acrylic or something but uh, that's also a way to keep the magnet in there and still be able to see it so that's it other than that play with it have fun and uh, for those of you who bought it and supported RWG research I do appreciate it but uh, most importantly this is an open source project build it yourself if you want I mean that's the whole point of what I did here I made it so you could 3d print the parts and if you have a 3d printer and you just want the parts you can also just purchase those but uh, the whole point of this project was to do it in an open source manner and give away all the stuff you need to be able to build this for yourself and enjoy it so have fun with it and uh, impress some of your friends I know I've done this it's a good uh, conversation piece as well